Middle, high school, college students, what's up? It's me, Seth. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about mindsets for this fall. Mindsets for this fall. Mindsets to help you be successful for this fall, but also because if you have these mindsets for this fall, it will literally help you have a better life, a better future, more freedom, more fun, more choices, possibilities, opportunities in your future life. Mindsets for this fall. All right. Good thoughts good deeds, good actions. Here's the deal, yo. What what's what's up is this. This fall is going to be insane. It's weird, it's bizarre, it's crazy. We've got this pandemic thing going on. We don't know what's going to happen. You're going to be doing online classes, in-person classes, a mix, who knows. It's cuz sometimes it's going to be hard, sometimes it's going to be boring, sometimes it's just going to get old, sometimes it's going to get confusing. There's going to be all this change and uncertainty, but you you still have the opportunity to plant seeds in your life for you, for your future, and get as much out of this, regardless of how crazy it is and bizarre it is, get as much out of it as you can for your own life, your own future. But, but, there's a big but, and the but is, is that but we procrastinate. We're not motivated. We don't want to try. We get so frustrated, and we what happens is we start getting behind, and we start finding ways and having excuses and not taking action that is actually good for our lives. I know the screen time is going to get old. You know, sometimes you might not like the teacher or the subject or what you're asked to do. It's all going to get old, but the more you can invest as much as you can yourself, the better life you're going to have. So I want to give you 10 mindsets that will help your life this fall. And what I've done with these 10 mindsets is I've made a PDF with three pages on it. The first two pages explain the mindsets. The third one has a short version of it. You can put it up on your wall and read it every day. And I have instructions on how you can do that. But let me go through what these mindsets are and how they're going to help change your life. And please, if you're watching this and your parents are like, hey, check this guy out, see if you like this video, just give this a chance. Have an open mind and just give it a chance for a few minutes and see what you think. Number one mindset to have for this fall is this. I choose me, meaning you choose you. I invest in myself. I choose me. Even when I don't feel like it, and it's just, it's so daunting to do my schoolwork or whatever. I choose me because I'm planting seeds so that I can have a great future for myself. I'm going to do this. I choose me. Even when I'm resistant, I choose me. Number two, I make an impact. Do you know you matter? You completely matter. The world needs you. You literally have very specific characteristics and qualities that the you impact the world right now and when in your future when you're an adult you get to have an impact on the world what kind of an impact do you want to have is really the question so invest in yourself not only because it's for you and for your future but the more you invest in yourself the more you contribute and make an impact to your family your community the world nature the earth the planet you, what you do makes an impact and you get to decide how you want to make an impact. And that's a cool thing because you have freedom and choices. Next, three is I do my best and then I do a little bit better. So what you want to do is do your personal best. When I was, when I was a young person, I felt like my personal best was horrible. It was like horrible. But what I did that was my saving grace is I would do my personal best and it may have not even been that good, but it was my best. And then I did a tiny bit better. And when you get in the habit of doing your best and doing a little bit better, you're going to get what's called grit or resilience. People who don't have grit and resilience give up. They get stuck in life. They really struggle as adults. Okay. Uh, they blame everybody. They're a victim. But people who do their best and a little, a little bit better, that will open doors and opportunities. So when things get hard for people and they've learned to be resilient, they don't give up. They put a little effort in. They're patient. They're persistent. They keep trying. And eventually, they have great successes. And life can feel really good. So number three is I do my best and then I do a little bit better. Number four, I speak up. I advocate for myself. When I need help, I say, hey, I need help. When I don't get it, I say, hey, I really need some help here. I'm proud of myself. I'm humble. I'm not perfect. I need some help. The most successful people in the world, uh, whether they're musicians that you like, athletes that you like, entrepreneurs that you like, authors that you like, whoever, the most successful people in the world 
know how to ask for help and they know how to receive help. That is what we do. So number four is I speak up. I speak up. I speak my truth. I don't just act like I'm perfect and like I have to have everything figured out. You don't. Your parents don't have it figured out. Your teachers don't have it figured out. Nobody on this entire planet has it figured out. We're all trying to figure it out. There's no rule book to life. So speak up when you need help. And it's a very important thing to learn how to do. Next, number five is I don't let distractions get the best of me. Look, we live in a noisy world. There's so many distractions. Squirrel, there are so many distractions. And distractions, the problem with them is when they hold us back from what's most important and they keep us from doing things that are planting seeds for ourselves. So we don't let distractions get the best of us. You, you don't let it get in the way of what's most important, which is the people in your life. That's the most important thing is the people in your life and then having a life that matters with choices and opportunities. Next, number six is I don't give my inner critic much attention. In my mind, I have an inner critic. So do you, so does your mom, so does your dad, so does every human being on earth. Even the most confident people you can imagine have an inner critic. What does that inner critic do? That inner critic says, you can't do this. This is stupid. You don't have to do this. Put it off. Do it later. Do it tomorrow. You're not smart. You're, you're dumb. You can't handle this. It's too hard. I can't, I can't, I can't. You know, the inner critic says, I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not cool enough. I'm not funny enough. I'm not interesting enough. The inner critic is in there telling me all these bad things about myself. So if I try to play guitar, if I try to do something, you know, with friends, it's always in there kind of nagging at me. But, and the most successful people in the world have the inner critic, but they don't listen to it. They don't give it more, they give more attention to the positive. I can do this. I can accomplish anything. I can work hard. I can figure it out. Yes, it's challenging. Yes, I want to give up sometimes, but I got this. I can figure it out. I'm, I'm amazing. I'm worthy. I'm a good person. And you have to take baby steps. It's not about, we often get stuck because we think we need big steps, but we just got to not listen to that inner critic and take action. Number seven is I'm honest with myself about my strengths and limitations. We lie to ourselves, all of us. Your parents do, I do, we all lie to ourselves. But do we want to listen to the lying voice or the honest voice? So it's human nature to be unrealistic about things. And what we struggle with in school is we are unrealistic about how much effort is needed to do uh, an assignment. And we're unrealistic about how long it'll take to read a novel or to write a paper or to study for a test or to do our homework. And that being unrealistic with ourselves gets us in trouble. And we need to really listen to our mind and listen for the truth. What's the truth here? You know, okay, yeah, I, I think I'm going to do my project and I always put it off to the last minute. Then it's the night before, then I turn it in and it's, I, you know, didn't do a good job on it and... You know, it, it, even though I got a B, that was not, I faked it. And it really wasn't what I was trying to do. So anyhow, we need to really be honest with ourselves about our limitations and be realistic about how much energy things take. Number eight is I focus on the good. Okay. I focus on the good. It's so easy to focus on the negative, what we don't have, what we want, what we wish we had, the way we wish things are, how this person did this wrong and that person did this thing and that was so stupid and this person is, they just need to do things the other way and we blame them and we're like a victim. You know what? Focusing on good, gratitude, thankfulness, what we do have in life. That's a mindset that is going to get you so far because we default to the negative. We have to work hard actually to be positive. It doesn't necessarily come naturally to us to be positive. We have to work for it. I focus on the good is number eight. Number nine, you might not like this one, but hear me out. I let my parents help. I know. They don't help the right way, or when they help, it's annoying, or it's nagging, or you just want them off your back, or whatever. You are supposed to be pushing your parents away biologically, and what I mean by that is you get to an age when you're an adolescent when you're like, I want to be independent. I don't want my parents helping me. I want I don't want them bugging me about this. I got this. But we, again, like I said before, we have to be realistic about it. And your parents are just trying to help. They may not know exactly how to, so that's the other part of this. I let my parents help. 
but I don't let them enable me, which is not helpful. So there are ways that they help where they're doing too much for you. Don't let them do that. That doesn't help you. I let them help because I do want to be an independent adult. And the more I let them help now, the quicker I'm going to be an independent. I'm going to be an independent adult. So there's a good time to accept help from them. And there's a positive, healthy way to accept help for them. So instead of just getting frustrated at them and saying, Mom, Dad, leave me alone. Get off my back. I got this. Why don't you trust me? Stop bugging me. Stop nagging me. Um, Say, hmm, I would love your help, but I want you to know how I want your help. And then tell them how you want the help. They're not mind readers. Ten, the world needs my unique gifts. The world needs you. You have very unique qualities. So what you want to do is build on your strengths, your interests, your passions, your talents, your gifts. Even if you don't think you have any, build on whatever you enjoy and build those things because you're an awesome person and the world needs you. You do have something special to offer. You're going to find purposeful, meaningful work if you look for it and you have these mindsets. And finally, 11 is a bonus. I take 100% responsibility for my own happiness, success, and well-being. We like to blame others. We like to think, you know, but when we take responsibility for ourselves, full responsibility, you know, our parents push us, our teachers push us. They're, it seems like they're taking responsibility, like they want it more than us. They might encourage us. They might try to help us. But ultimately, it's up to you. My life is 100% my responsibility and up to me how I create my life. And if I have bad things happen in my life, I can't just blame everybody for what's happened in my life. I got to look here first. What can I do to create a great life? So it's ultimately up to me. Yeah, bad things happen. That's true. But the majority of it, it's up to me. So bonus. I take 100% responsibility. So let me go through those real quick. Here's where we go. One, I choose me. Two, I make an impact. Three, I do my best then a little bit better. Four, I speak up for myself. Five, I don't let distractions, squirrel, get the best of me. Six, I don't give my inner critic much attention. Seven, I'm honest with myself about my strengths and my limitations. Eight, I focus on the good. Nine, I let my parents help. 10, the world needs me. 11, I take 100% responsibility for my happiness, success, and well-being. So I put a little bonus line on there that says, finally, and this is about you. Finally, I'm an amazing human being. You are. I'm kind, generous, thoughtful, caring, loving, smart, talented, capable. And even though I always try to be a better person, I like, appreciate, and accept myself exactly for who I am today. You are perfect where you are at today. You are. There is nothing to change. So I'm, I'm not saying don't try, but really we can accept we're right where we're supposed to be. So I hope those mindsets help you. I hope you take them to heart. I hope you practice them, try them out for a month, print these things up, see what it does to your life, make up your own if you want to, and have an amazing day. My name is Seth Perler. I'm a coach in Boulder, Colorado. I help struggling students navigate this thing called education so that you can have a great life. Hit subscribe if you want, share it with people if you want, comment if you want, let me know what you think. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. Take care.